uh, Pastor Don's testimony of what she experienced and what she went through. And I want to emphasize and say, there's a lot of times, there's a lot of times, even now, and you know your behavior, how it has affected women negatively. You know the words you've used against women. You know the mindset that you had against women. You know the kind of behavior that you had against women. And you know the things you've done against women. And it's all said <laughs> that some went to prison, came back from prison, with a, still with the same mindset. And we heard the story that hurting people hurts people. And we also mentioned that there is there's no excuse for crime. There is no excuse for crime. There is no excuse for disrespecting women. And there is no excuse actually for assaulting and raping women. There is no excuse. But moving forward from that, I want to say to you, because I, usually I put Pastor Don here and then she sits here and then we refer to that. But for now, we're quoting from her story. <laughs> we do not want the continuation of that sad reality. And you are capable and strengthened enough as we journey with you. And you have the opportunity to journey with us for as long as you live. You can be part of us. And that's why we're here. We're here to stretch out our hand to say to you, you know what? If you want, if you say to yourself, I do not want to hurt women. I do not want to be a vessel of a raping woman. I do not want to be an instrument to bring pain and sadness and break families and break relationships. And if you say that, and this is the time where you will take responsibility for your past thoughts, present thoughts, and start a new future. You look at this plant. Isn't it beautiful? Mm -hmm. I Monica, make sure that we have pinkish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we have pinkish. That's why, that's why I think a lot about women because I see pinkish also <laughs> somewhere here. But anyway, but as beautiful as this plant is, because pink also symbolizes purity. Mm. Meaning you, at one stage, were a young boy. You were a child. The pink, you were pure, you were clean. Everybody wanted to have you. Everybody wanted to have you in his hand. Oh, the baby boy, you're so cute. What's your name? Everybody wanted your name. Everybody wanted to speak to you, even though you could not speak back. Even if, even though you, you, could, you, you didn't even understand their wedding. But anyway, everybody wanted to have you. Your uncles, my boy, mother, when, it come, when she comes back from home, she's excited to have you. And those of you who had an opportunity to at least you have a father at home, they were all excited to have you because you were this beautiful. But you know what? As we say, this plant, you see this plant, Bennett, as beautiful as it is, when something happens to this plant, let's say, for instance, physical abuse, because some of us are coming out of families and out of homes where we never felt accepted, where our parents, actually both of them, we spoke about poor parenting, mm -hmm. where it had so happens that our the poor parenting affected us. We had a beating unnecessarily from both our parents. A father comes back home, drunk on a Friday. He worked the whole day, he worked the whole week. And when he comes back on a Friday, instead of offering a plate, a decent plate of food, chips, that's all you expected as a young boy, isn't it? You don't expect so much. You're expecting to say, here's a five frame, my little boy. But you never experienced that. Because when he comes, he only comes back drunk. And when it's drunk, you know what it does? You have to be hidden. You have to be taken away. You have to be moved. And when that happens, a little bit of you, a little bit of you was broken. And I must say, it's not always an easy topic to talk about. And some of you experience sexual abuse. And sexual abuse, sex, I mean, I mean in our days, rape, it is a private thing, usually. It always does by a close person. And I know a lot of men who came out, and Mervyn mentioned it also, he was open about it, to say that he was raped as a young boy. 
And a person who normally rapes a person, it is not a person who is far from the family mm. of, of far distant and related from you. Mm. It's always a close person. Mm. And sometimes we have kept those in. We have bottled those kind of feelings in. But you know what? My uncle allowed me to touch his private parts. And you know what? When all that happened, this happened. A little bit of us. A little bit of us. You see, we, we are slowly falling apart. And people look at this and say, it's still, a, it's still a, a complete plant. It's no longer complete because of the emotional abuse. When you mentioned it, Bennett, and you said they called your names at school. Mm. A piece of you was broken, moved. A piece of you, they removed a piece of you. Out on yourself. Your confidence was, was taken away from you because of your cold names. And those names made you to be uprooted. They uprooted you. You uprooted. Because remember, in this container, in this container, this plant belongs. And this container is supposed to be treated with love. This plant was supposed to be treated with love, nurtured with care. And this happened. The abuse, the sexual abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse, and all the trauma that you had to go through. But can you tell me, isn't it this egg fragile? Yes. The egg is fragile. If I can drop this egg, it can break. Yes. Gone. But can we say, for transformation's sake, and say this egg, it symbolizes your siblings. This egg could symbolize your children. Some of you had siblings. And your siblings were affected by your behavior. Because you know what? You were hurt. They don't know who hurt you. They do not know your experiences. They do not know how your parents, how your father treated you. They do not know that your father rejected you. They do not know that your father mistreated you. They do not know that your father was giving you a beating unnecessarily. They do not know that you walked to school barefoot. And yet, you took it out on them. They were affected by your behavior. You aren't just breaking a fragile thing. I mean, look at this little girl. Look at this little girl. Knows nothing of what happened to, what, to an elderly brother. Knows nothing. Say, with Nexi. She doesn't know it. She appreciates you as a brother. But yet, because of what you went through, you saw to it that you know what? I'm going to spoil you. I'm going to steal every cent in this house. I'm going to steal even your, your carrier money for school. You carry 10 rents, I take your 5 rents. So your behavior is starting to be challenging even at home. People fear you, not just in the community, you are feared into your own house. And you know what? The trust that is broken into your own house, stealing from your own house, make life challenging even for your own mother. Some of, your, some of the parents, they don't even desire to go back home after work. Do you know why? Because of they know the trauma they're going to experience because of your behavior. And mess up their lives. And I must say, as I said, that some of you have children. Some of you have children. And your children are growing up. Your children are growing up without fathers. I told you my story a little bit. I said, my father was also absent into my own life. The only time I knew my father and faced my father, it is when my father comes back. I was staying inside B, I remember. He, he would come down the street at the corner. He, he's drunk. I don't know how he saw the way to my, to, you know, to my street, but he would never get to my, to my granny's doors because my granny was a Christian lady. So I'm not sure if she feared or respected my granny that much to stand at the corner. But I don't have a good memory of my father being a young boy. My only memory I have of him is when he comes to visit me drunk. I was rejected. I was abandoned. Somebody who's supposed to pave a way and give identity to me was absent from me. 
And you know what? And some of your children are somewhere there. They are staying with somebody else. You're not taking responsibility of your own children. A child is crying somewhere. He's calling with. He's calling for your for a, for a daddy. Mm. Pastor, don't mention it. That her own daughter is longing and searching for a father. He mentioned it. That his son is on the look in every cricket fraternity, looking for his, looking for his father. There is always that longing. I had that longing as a young boy. I wanted to have a father figure. I wanted to be loved by my father. I wanted to be like any other boy, to be taken into a soccer field. I love football. I was good in football. I loved football. But yet, I had no support from my father. And I had my granny only as a, as, as a mother figure and a father figure. <coughs> and you know what? Uh, this is just a coke. This is just a book. But let me tell you something. Don't move too far, my brother, because ah. I'm about to, I'm about to offend the next. Uh, the very much. <laughs> but, but, but do you see this coke? This coke, it has still emotions in it. They are still. But because of the hat, because of the pain. It's no longer steel. The emotions are juggling up and down. You have sleepless nights. And that's when Sam started to use substances. Because you're trying to normalize. You still want that feeling. That normal feeling. You still want that peaceful feeling. You do not have that peaceful feeling anymore. Because of you are shaken. You are moved. Your pain is moving you. Your pain says, we say what? And I'm so quiet. No. And I say, quiet. You see, when, and when you're angry, I'm going to preach you because I'm angry. <laughs> but in any case, but in any case, but when you have those feelings, you are reminded. Your emotions are shaking up and down. You're not stable anymore. They are some whole point. And I must say that some of you in anger committed murder. Out of anger, you assaulted an innocent person. Never mentioned it the other day. And he said that the person in his court, he, you know, he actually assaulted an innocent man in his court. And that's all because of anger. And anger sometimes is used for control, for power, for manipulation. Because of what you're feeling inside of you. The pain is so great, you can't control it. And the only way you're just going on out in anger. And you're just going on to rob out any other person that you see on the road. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Look at this. Look at this. Because anger is an emotion. Anger, it is that anger, it is that steam. Anger, it is that steam in you. Anger is that steam in you. <laughs> Anger is that steam in you. And sometimes when that steam, when you release that steam, a lot of people are getting hurt. Yeah. A lot of people are getting hurt. And those of you who were in the number will tell that the only way to prove your rank and to confirm your rank, to confirm your rank, it's about blood. Mm. You use anger because you want to prove power. And you know what? I will destroy this one. <coughs> but for, 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 for the sake of picture in your mind, I'll just use it, but I won't destroy it. <coughs> this one, because of your behavior, because of your behavior that's messed up, because of the pain that you're going through, you know what? You're hurting other people. This is your victim. These are the people we hurt. We say that crime damages relationships. Crime damages relationships. And some of you sitting here today, your crimes, I mean, your, your relationships are damaged. You're longing, I mean, uh, we, 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 we heard from our brother. 
We had the story. I mean, it's out. I'm using it. I'm using it because of it's out. But we had a sad story. He longs to say, "I love you, mom." He longs to say that, and it's, he can't say that. He can't say that. He doesn't have confidence to do it. Do you know why? It's because of there's a broken relationship. Because the beauty that was there, it's no longer there. Because this beauty gets taken away and uprooted and messed up just like you. All that you touch, you want to make sure in every relationship you get to, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if it's at home. It doesn't matter if it's with your children. It doesn't matter if it's with your wife or girlfriend. You make sure that you mess up every relationship you have because of your pain. And you know what? A lot of people get missing. People lost innocence. People lost innocence. People lost it. Confidence. Because of you label them. You call them names. People lost trust in you. You made them your own victims. They became your victims. In this community of Makasa, as you said, that some of you are feared because of your behavior in this community. It has affected them. People, when they see you, even if you don't have intentions to rob them, but I need to make sure that my wallet is safe mm. because you are coming. And that is said. A rejected child, why is a rejected child now? <laughs> no, can we tell them? Uh, unless you take responsibility, my brother, the child will remain rejected. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, you see, again, these are just eggs. But for transformation's sake, these eggs, they belong to the children of the victim, mm -hmm. the family of the victim. They <coughs> have feelings. Pastor, don't mention it again. I'll, I'll refer to that story where she mentioned that when her, when, when her children ran to her to say, Mommy, 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 she said, Stop. She, she, I mean, she, she came out very strong in anger. Such that even her sister didn't like her response. She felt dirty. And her behavior, her behavior affected her children. Because children now are used to be loved, welcomed, mm. accepted and celebrated. But yet, because of something that was caused, because of one man's choice to decide to rape a woman, to take away something from a victim. And you know what happened? Your actions aren't just affected the person you murdered. It's not just about the person you murdered, or not just about the person you robbed, but even the family of the person that you robbed was affected. There are children today whom would blame their parents and say that my mother never loved me. But they do not know that somebody decided to cause a pain to their mother mm. and their mother's desire to love them. Again, Pastor John said that I had to give away my child to social services. She had to give away a child to social services. And she, it was a choice that was forced down her throat. Somebody forced that choice down her throat. And she had to take it because she felt disconnected with this child. And to protect the future of this child. And it's the root of it. It's not originated from her, unfortunately. Someone's behavior and someone just chosen, decided to do as he pleased. And yet, a child is forsaken. Their behavior. <laughs> so, our victims are now developing their own victims because remember we mentioned it yesterday that victims have emotions victims go through things they also when we do some when we do things against our uh, uh, against people we need to know that they also have emotions they can feel and as superman mm -hmm. they are human they can feel when you steal from home then you must know that they feel it because they are human mm -hmm. you're actually turning them into something else and your behavior against them, it isn't just affecting them, but it's affecting they, because of what they feel, they will also do it unto others. Mm. And it's so sad. I know a sister who normally used to come and testify in, in processes like this, when we do it in prison, and, and she said, 
when my father was murdered, I divorced. When my father was murdered, I couldn't be a mother to my child. Now she became an, 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 an inadequate mother. She longed to be a mother, but she, she just couldn't. She just couldn't. And a mother was and, and a father was murdered. Was murdered. Her behavior changed. She was searching. And as she was searching, she went on to study criminology. Because of she was looking for answers. I want to know who could kill my father and how he thinks, how he feels. Victims want to know. How do you feel? Because victim wants answers. And you guys, with your behavior, having all the answers. And you just have that control, that power in you. As you walk in this community, there's a lot of people with questions about you. There's a lot of people with questions. And you are sitting there with answers. You might not have murdered that person that died down the street, but you might know who that will kill that person. Because you are sitting with the power of information in you because of your behavior. Your pain is so great for you that you make sure that everyone's life is destroyed. And that's how the lady felt. She felt like she's dead. Up until Reverend Jonathan Clayton said to me, <coughs> but you know what? Family champion, throw away the keys, the keys of the prison. Because of the perpetrator was refusing to tell the truth. It was her that murdered the father because she was the wife. She murdered, she, she murdered the man, but she didn't want to come out with it. Who helped you murder? Because it's impossible that a woman could, could have a weapon as big as that elephant. Uh, yeah, and it, 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 it was so impossible for her to do all that and carry it into the car and, and you know, into the river, of load her again and throw, and, and throw the men into the, the body, into the river. It was all impossible. But then she refused to tell the full story and the full truth. And victims want the truth. Mm -hmm. And some of the people are dying and living without that. And people are getting sick. Of, 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 of searching. People, people are getting sick, my brother. People are getting sick. They want truth. They want answers. And you're sitting here with all the answers. Maybe your mother also wants to know why you did it. And she doesn't have the courage to ask you at home why you behave the way you behave. She doesn't have the courage. And you know what? It's not just you that's in pain. You continue. You must make sure that others are also feeling the same pain. <laughs> But look at this. Was it going to happen? Yeah. But look at this. This is a clean water. As I said, that when I refer to the plant, that is a beautiful plant. This is a clean bottle of water. Because of all this nonsense that happened to you. And you know what happens? You never realized that you're also hurting yourself. You never realized. As you were committing all the crimes that you were committing, <coughs> as you were misbehaving, as you were raping, as you were robbing, as you were murdering, as you were assaulting, you never realize that every action has consequences. And your own life was running out. Your own life was running out. You know how it ran out? Unfortunately, all of you ended up incarcerated. The plan was never to go to prison. No one that, com no one that commits crime plans to go to prison. We don't plan to go to prison. We plan to succeed. When we do know that we plan to succeed. I was doing crime myself. I, my only plan when, I, when I'm going out to do crime was for me to succeed. I never planned. It so happened that one day, it happened that one day I got caught. I got caught once and several times and many other times, but at this time, now I, 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 I couldn't escape it anymore. Because everybody was fed up. I became a customer in Bolsu. And you know what? I hurt myself because of I was so selfish. Sentenced to 16 years behind bars. 
sent us to 16 years behind bars. And you know what? I wasn't just alone in prison. The wound that you see here, my family had the same wound. The pain I felt, it was nothing compared to what others felt with me because of me. And you know what I did? I became so selfish even further. Even though I see that I'm sentenced to 16 years, I can do nothing. I've made further choices. I sat on my mess. I created it, I sat on it. I sit on it. How do you sit in your mess? You sit in your mess by your choices. The choices you make when you are even caught and sentenced and behind bars, when you know that you have a problem of anger and you don't want to take responsibility of it, you don't want to take control of it and manage it, then you are sitting in your mess. We made, I made choices of being a number in prison. I was a 28 number in prison. And as a 28, I told myself, you know what? There's no turning back. 16 years is long. If I can be a weak in prison now, if I can be a weakling, then I'm, I'm just going to be a pushover. I don't want to be a pushover. I want to be myself. I know who I was when I was outside. I wanted to maintain my status. It was all about me again. I was selfish. I thought of myself. I never thought of how my family feels outside. I thought of how am I going to survive in this place. I became a number. Mm. And the number forced me to change who I am. It changed my name, changed my identity. And you know what? I had to perform my duties according to the law of the number. Mm. And you know what? Sometimes we become so comfortable and sleep on it. We don't care who feels what. Because some of our behavior, it affected not just us, not just the guys behind us, it affected the officials. Some of you are on parole as you speak now, and the officers are having problems with you because of your behavior. You came back from prison for a murder. You came back from prison for a robbery, but yet still again, your father is still having problems with you because even though he served you, you know, with visit, my son, there's food. My son, there's money in your property. But yet today, you still have a broken relationship with your father. And you know what? It's because of we never take responsibility. We never took responsibility of the mess we caused. Now I'm bringing a challenge to you. And my challenge with you, if is there anyone sitting here that says, I recognize myself with this mess, I created this mess. I created this mess in a temple. And I want to clean my mess. I'm taking responsibility today. Because remember that when you take responsibility, you need to recognize. You need to recognize that this is my day. <clears throat> this is my swap pen thing. This is my blind spot. You need to accept the fact that you did it. And you need to acknowledge it. That it was me. And it is you that needs to clean it because it is you who created it. And I want to take I want to take that challenge to stand up. You just stand up where you are. You say, I recognize I created all this mess. I created this. It was me. I created it. This is a personal moment, gentlemen. It has nothing to do with anybody. This has nothing to do with anybody. It has everything to do with you. You, you, you come close, those of you. Come, come close. Come, come around it. Let, let's move out of their cycle. You understand? Let, let's get into our cycle of responsibility. You know what? You know where you are. <laughs> You know where you are. You know how deep is your mess. And you know how messy is your mess. You, you know how messy is your mess. The measure of my mess is nothing compared to yours. It's my mind is different. And I know how deep and wide it is. I want you to act according to how you know it. I acted. As you can see, I acted because I know mine was too much. I can't even measure it. I don't know the extent of my mess. I do not know. 
Pastor can tell you, there was a time where baby was dropped at the church. My behavior didn't just stop when I was in prison. He knows a child, when I told my, my boy, was brought to the church, and he was there, he was present at the church. When they brought the baby at the church, my behavior, that was my behavior. People can testify and tell. And we know he's a troublesome boy. He's a troublesome man. But let me tell you something today. I know the extent of my mess. I know how deep it was. I want you to act according to it. Because why? It causes me to sit. That's how, that, 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 that's, that's how I felt. And that's how I feel about my mess. And you can act according to feel as well. If you feel like sitting, you can sit. If you feel like you're lying with it, you can lie. I know you're wearing, you know, expensive clothes. Yeah. Maybe you're wearing, you know. But let me tell you something. Oh, you can wash it all that stain away. Mm. But the stains you cause to victims. The stains you cause to, you can't wash it by homo. You can't use Mac and Seth and, and all this soaps. Yeah. That's nothing. But at least this is just an illustration that can be washed away. Yeah. But the pain we cause to other people cannot be washed away. Mm. It will take time for them to heal. For you. What I need you to shout out as we're sitting here today. I need you to shout out. Just, you don't have to be long. Just tell how the depth and the measure of your pain and say, you know what? Mommy, I'm sorry, man. You know who you're sorry for. Danny, I'm sorry that I did this and that to you. Today I'm taking responsibility. Maybe you want to shout out and say, you know what? Sorry, my daughter. I had to put you through, through this. I neglected you. I rejected you. I abandoned you. You didn't have a father. Because I also grew up without a father. I didn't know what it means to have a father. That's why I did it to you as well. Maybe that's what you want to say. Now just say whatever that is in your heart. Shame. You can shout out, you don't have to. You can just come down. They can look after the dance part. They can speak English part, I think. It's coming from England, I think. You can speak English if you're comfortable. But you can speak your what you can speak your Afrikaans if you're comfortable. You can even speak Tosa if you're comfortable. Yeah. Whatever. People will translate you. First of all, I just want to say. I love you, mom, and I'm very sorry to put you in that position for the best I may. I'm sorry, mom, for everything I've done wrong in, 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 in my growing up. I know everything you did was only to want a better life and education for me. Sorry, my daughter, sorry, my son, for being excellent all these years in your life. It's because I didn't have an excellent father in my life. I want to say, I'm sorry to everyone that I've harmed you. Apart from my mother, family, victims, I'm sorry. All I can say is, I'm sorry for all the things I've done. Sometimes I have to do it, sometimes I don't have to do it. But I really am sorry. I'm sorry, Mom, for stuff that I've done in my life. I hope you can forgive me. And other people also. I'm sorry, my child, for putting you through the same things I went through. Sorry, not for being there in your life. But I hope you find it one day because you can so sorry, my child. And you know what, gentlemen? You know what, while we're sitting down, when we speak of accountability, the first thing first, when you're sitting in a mess like this, and you realize, and you did it, as, and you acknowledge it, you recognize it, as we say, you call for help. Because you, you, you realize that you have a problem. You realize that you have a problem. And in this problem, you can't help yourself. You need extended help. And that extended help, we call that help accountability. That's your accountable partner. That's why you have these facilitators. One man could have just done this. 
But it's impossible that this could be a one man show because it needs facilitators. It needs people like Pastor John, like Anne Monica, and many other people that are sitting. It needs them all. So that when you shout out for help, they can come alongside you. If you shout out for help and raise your hand now, there is somebody who hears who will come out and bring you out of the mess and help you out of the mess. Can you do that? You can shout? Yeah, I need help. <laughs> okay, don't 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 try uh, that one. But you know what? The journey. Uh, I'm trying to squash now. Uh, the journey that you guys have now started it will never finish we will change until the day we die when I thought I'm changed in prison my changes were not enough because myself I dealt with many other issues in my, in my life but I never dealt with my last that means that there is always a deep hidden issues within us there's always deep hidden issues within us that sometimes we don't allow other people, our accountable partners. You cry out for help and then you tell a facilitator, look, this is the problem, this is the problem. But you don't get to tell that you always smell blood. Mm. Your anger is uncontrollable. Whenever you get into an argument, you go for killing. Mm. You never get to tell the brutality and the evil of your crime. There are hidden issues within us that causes us to do the things we do. We don't get to tell, but you know what? I long for my father. That boy that ran away here the other day on Monday. But let's say now over here. Uh, can you read a one? Read a one. Read a one ran away. He shed a little bit of himself. And I could tell from his face, he's finished, he's broken. I could tell. I looked, I just looked at him. And you could tell the boy is broken. And he's asking himself, where is my mother? He's asking where is my mother? And the journey that you're going to have with these people, these facilitators, it is that journey of accountability. They are going to be accountable to you, you will account to them, and that's how it works. It will work together. But it will only work best when you open up. When you open up, it will work best. And I must say, I don't want to share a lot because I want to call God now. Uh, so I wanted to make ready for it. Why why we still here and then you just make make that part done. Okay, the food is here, but we just need to, to give God in there so that we can clean the mess one time and then we're out of it. Mm. Yeah. So a little bit of myself, uh, I, as I said, I I was in prison myself. I was sentenced to many years, I was sentenced to 16 years in prison. <coughs> and I said again that I never dealt with my last problem. And because of that even though I was granted with an opportunity to serve at a local church where these pastors are serving. I messed it up again. Because sometimes we get new, we get opportunities like this. This is an opportunity now. Mm -hmm. You are granted. Mm -hmm. People are trusting you. People are trusting you with chocolates already. Mm -hmm. Maven gave you chocolates already. Meaning that there is a little bit of trust that's already taken. There's new changes taking place in here right now. But yet, I messed it up. In a place where I was supposed to keep my character together and live like my choices. But yet, because of that secret, my last problem, I ended up having two children. I ended up having two children while serving as a minister <laughs> at the church. Mm. And it's so sad that, you know what? It so happened that, just, to, just for your confidence, guys, to prove to you that I'm also human. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not a saint. I'm not as complete as I'm standing here. Not because if I'm talking to you, then I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm sharing all this because I myself have gone through and understand this kind of brokenness. Because I rejected my own son as well. Because I thought, you know what, hey, I'm in my prison mind is also coming up now. Hey, uh -uh, man, I, get no deal now. I have this one. And why must I have this one also now? Hey, this is too much. This is going to be a huge responsibility. So the point is, run away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try to deny it. And one day it confronted me because of the girl was in prison. 
and Pastor Clayton's wife is working at the, at the female prison, is doing the same process at the female prison. And then she had the story and told Pastor Clayton. And Pastor Clayton said, Ross, now your name is coming up at the female prison. Said, we, need to, we need to take you there. You see, then I said to Pastor, no, I don't want to go. He said, no, Sine, just clear your name because it is affecting the work we're doing in the prison. Just come and clear your name and to visit clan here because they got to go fast in the mirror. I'm against the wall now. And again, I faced this there to tell you the truth. I rejected the boy again. Again, I rejected the boy again in front of the in front of the woman whom I slept with. I said, oh, oh, I slept with her, but I don't know about the child. And it's not just about that. I abandoned my own children as well. Because they were no longer with me. They were at the Eastern Cape, but I'm here. Sure. And not their mother was taking care of them. Not even me was taking care of them. No. Their granny was taking care. So same thing that happened to me, I did it to them. Mm. Mm. Because that was my cycle. Mm. It happened to them. Mm. And you know what? I had to clean my mess. <coughs> Clayton said, Sinatema, now you see when you have an accountable partner, when you have an accountable partner, it works to clean your mess. Because Clayton said, you know what's name? After a long conversation, that meeting, I don't want to go to details of that meeting, but after a long conversation, then he said, Sinatema, deal with it. I came to a point where I said, Pastor, I admit, I admit, it is me. I am pregnant. <coughs> and the boy was looking just like me. Mm, yes. The boy was looking just like me. I couldn't run away from it, but you know, the, the prison might just come up and say, hey, I'm going to say Alias. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't know. But to cut the long story short, what happened, I took my responsibility, I brought the kids back, and as I'm speaking with you today, those kids are with me. They are happy, they are with my wife, we are a happy family together, and that can only be achieved when you take full responsibility of your past, of your actions. And there is always a way forward because of these people that you can help. I say, I say, I say, then I'm moving back when I'm, I'm moving back. Listen, <laughs> so you want me to move? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But next one, no man. <laughs> I will clean. I will clean. You just make moments. Make moments. No, no, my mess is clean up, man. My, I did just. I was. 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 I because when I'm in my community, I get respected almost like somebody that has never been a gangster. That has never been a... My community look at me like that little boy that I used to grow up, you know, in front of them. Why? Because I did all this and it was hard. It was painful. It was sad. The very same community that put me in prison. The very same community that destroyed me. The very same community that was against me. I had to do this. And I said, God, I will never make it. I ended up in ICU. I was like, God, I will never make it. I ended up in prison. I was like, I will never make it. And I tried to build this thing and build this thing. You know, and when I, the more I build, the more the peer pressure is pushing me. The more I build, I want to get out. Pushing me. I, I, I just met with the, with, with the warden in Paul's for prison. I frage me, wat kom maar ze weer niet terug? Ik zie mijn manier kom weer terug. Toen gaat hij rennen, vindt hij naar jou krijgt. Hoe kom ik aan dat hij maar kan beter? Ik ben bij brood, maar zie aan pek. Toen prezen ik een stukje pijs. Maar deze loving God, die heb ik met u dus gezien. Ik brood, maar zie aan pek. Ik heb me zie aan getrokken toen gebrand, want ik al al wat ik dit meni is, want ik ken dat ik er al zijn. Want for me, it's not about dying, it's about me changing what I got. But there's a loving God on there that said, I prayed, I said, if you can give me one more chance, and that one more chance did happen. When I came out, I got crushed again, but I didn't turn my back this time. I kept my loyalty, I kept my word on top of this. When I, when I, when I look at my community still, I spoke to the grandmother, to the mother, to the daughter. Now is the child, and then is the third child, which I'm not selling drugs to. Look at that generation, the rubble effect. Look what I did. 
from, from it started to, I deal with a grandmother. She's now a great grandmother, but I'm not dealing the drugs to the great grandchild. <coughs> and I look at that child and I look at that generation and I'm like, God, it's only you that can forgive me for what I did mm. with the great grandmother. Look at the great grandson. And I could only pray over a boy every time he walked past me. He come and spill him in a lolini. That's what, what, what the rebel effect did. <coughs> That's why when I'm back in, 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 in my community, I can only walk and pray because of this mess that is all. There's sometimes I've, I, I've tried to run away and I've tried everything. But God just hit me right back. I even tried, so I prayed my <coughs> way out of prison. Nobody prayed his way to prison, right? It's like, but Monsieur taught your way to. I prayed my way out of prison. The guy would hope for the ministry. I was like, God, I pray for this, but you giving me this. Mm. It doesn't make sense. Mm. You you are God that listened to, to how I ask, but why you give me that? And it's like I'm saving you from that and I'm healing you to become this. But this way I want you to go back to work. Mm. Mm. Like like it just said. So I look, but just to walk to the shop, I look around every time when I look around, I'm like, yeah, the harvest is so plenty, mm. but there's no laborers, man. Yes. Mm. It's like, where's my brother? The swan. Keep on saying that word, like, Kunia. I'm like, I'm over those who are by here, look, I'm looking at them, there's plenty more just like that. Okay, keep goodness, I'm like, that's next. It's like, that thing switch to them. And you know, we're fighting. There's so many times when I lie in my bed, I'm like, <coughs> why do I help people like you? Mm -hmm. Teach people like you or try to talk people to you. Why? God, why do I do this? I, be, I know I've been there, but, but why do I do this? It's just to show the beacon of hope. Like I said to Alex this morning, I didn't want to come this whole week. I wasn't supposed to. This is my rest week, like a, what we call it, sabbatical resting week, because I'm studying next week. Why? Because God had made me do this. Mm. See all this? For 10 years I did, I did this, guys. It wasn't easy. For 10 years, for, for, for most of my life, I did this since 12 years old. I did this since 12 years old. 16 years old, to what I know the word of Stachy Brunsi. At 16 years old, to when I can know me over and call and stand to you, who come is in a can be escobar for me because of bad. So, if it was escobar, guys, I've been there at 16 years old. I dedicated my life to that world because it's in my family. The yellow two out point of us, Bernard Maisa. The two out point of the normal season to when I see me to when I was dark and dark, dark and dark, and I see for me. And it's a bella. I leave my camera and work for the general inspectors. I'm going to say, what the hell are the people? I'm a little boy, it happened in my house. My brother was a machine while he was a teenager. And so he passed on to us. <coughs> like like Sir Timba said, we, we have dreams, we want to play football. The people's house are no partner. It was. I had that Benny McCarthy dream because that's where Benny McCarthy is. Yeah, yeah, but I don't stay far from, from again Benny McCarthy. I want to be, he was like a role model, but yeah, I had my brothers and I, I told my brother, I don't want to be like him. I told my brother, he had everything, the money, the power, the women, I had others, even the big guys, I told him, I don't want to be like you guys, I want to be football player in Maradona. But never did I know the devil is also waiting for me. I can look at Zana and I know what laws are and I go look at and I walk away. When I was in the trip in Portsmouth prison, I was like, Jesus. <coughs> Imagine 16 years old, bro. You have everything. You don't need to ask nobody, nothing. I have the money. I have the women. I have the power. I can say, who love and who die. Who die and who love. But it was like a freak for the rest. I was sitting with guys who couldn't stay in field, so did this names, guys, I was, I was honored. I was hungry for everything. Mm. My brother, when they shot to me in 99, my sister was a drug. My sister was not a gangster. My sister was a drug dealer. She was moving from the Northern Cape 
to the Western Cape. See it, my older brother was on that side. They come was done, man. I mean, some move with my taxis. My brother, my brother, them skills was, was fucked up from first. He fell down. Work up to. They bit me so well as a first. A first is the entire run. He because a first is the entire run. The entire run. Two years ago, run. A pull the stone. The entire run. He because a pull the stone. The entire run. The entire run. Guys, they were moving the stuff. They wanted. I step out. I said, Nah. I get the almost a case the normal. I get the take for my family business. I wanted to. I put money on one sus. I go make it for Sydney. I want to swap. I use my drug dealing money on my act on my bros to get. I use everything I eat on my act on my bros. I can yell because as much as I bros, but scarily I'm a bros. But when you come to a deal, I use my power not to for it, but my bros is alright. Het is waar dat je moet je laten instep, Herrera. Want ik zie die broers dat het allemaal onder je brug. Dus je moet. Want toen trek je nog, die noemen trek aan ons eerste troon toe. En trek je nog, want nog trek je nog maar nog ons onder die brug. Something is wrong in die noemen nou. Dat ik ook terug aan een beetje vraag vraag. Dan gaat zit ik tussen die ouders en die onder die brug. En zit ik me dan, en zie ik me voor die aardse dan die laatste boeien. Wat zoek ze je? Hij moet broer met broer die noemen. So I get my way out of here. I go sit down in the corner and pray. Come on, wait. This is a man with a trombone, see him, man. So he advises it for me that it's there. Come on, play on the brug. He cannot go down as he in the. He cannot say see see. Then pray he say he's on his car. But he slap on the brug, my bro. He play in the train. He sit a sit down in the. I was no. I was no warm. I was no heat. And see, come on, bro. I get here. Who will get? Ya ramai berubah dan sesiun tu hut dapat mengincar tu bus kita mengincar tu lah. Nak ya ramai berubah dan kita ya kapan dia ya ramai berubah dan tunggu nak ya kapan dia. Isi aku isi aku ye. Iku mana orang itu tertinggi ye. Wah wat sih dia mana? And that's how I started with myself. That's why I could come to a sense of this. The last thing yang ada tu bus kita. Ik sit nak muno muno di bawah. Ik sit nak muno ni. Oh, selepas tu kita harus tu sit tu harus perat. Ik zeg, ik moet mijn na jaren. En die man het nou niet die streets gaan. En hier aan, ik is, ik het is te samen om die streets gaan. Hier is dat hij onder die brug. De vraag komt op, wat het ze gezien dat ik kan zien wat ze hier kop. Dus ik zeg, ik moet mijn broer. Die van mensen die lijkt is mijn broer. Ja, dan zou ik nou aan aan die zeggen. Zo moet ik mijn woest dan beter gekregen. Zo moet ik mijn mijn brein zo opgetrapt. Dus ik zeg, nou, ik ga het nog een keer ik krijg. Oké, ik was ik vandaag. Doe die aan hun guys. Dit is jou. Hij ziet ook niet dan wat ik voor jullie kan zien. Dus dus een thema wat die man moet bekeren niet trouw. En dan weet mos maar dat moet is kik bijna niet trouw. Nee, dan hij wil je kost mos. Ze weet mos. Ze mos je hart weer. Kracht weer. Ja, mos kracht. Zien ze wel kracht weer? Die is daar ik langs en die kracht weer. You see van die voor wat ze nou eigenlijk die is daar ik langs die kracht weer. Ik was die dikste rebuke, my bro. Hy is die skipbaarne gewees. My bro, allemaal die mense wat ek die rebuke weet, ek my vandag. Die man wat my bro laat doodgeskiet het, die man wat, wat, ek moes van, jylle is wat, jylle, jylle moes waar die bontas is. Ek het die school gegaan, ek het, die man was een goed jakkie, die man was een man van guns en draks. Dit men kan lief met die baar, dit men kan lief met die way I am to die. Die sjelle man hier wat net so kaart weggegeer. Naai, die ding wat die heren aan die weet die. Die sê kom, die ding aan die heren aan die weet die. Die sê, die sê, die sê, die sê, die sê, ek het hulle gekoor, die het vol dek past is. Hy gaat nou op, ek kom, ek weet, ek is die keer om ons oog uit. Hy gaat nou weer, ek kom, ek is die keer om ons oog uit. Hy blij die skiet by die. But this guy kept it. Without me knowing it, he became my motivation. Ek het die gewet die. The time when he came, we sê, we gaan met ons mekaar. En nou wanneer klose. Ek krij vir hom, ek kom binnen in die office. In die kaap, kom ons biek office hoor. Sien ons ons nou, eie kantoor, ons sien my reis op bella kantoor in die man. Ai, 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 valse kantoor, ons valse kantoor in die man, want die lap net so hank. Na, hy is vals. O, ons ek praat van een real, een real office. Want ek binnen my office kom, dus krik ek wat ek die man sien. Ek so, wow. En nu, 
Must I say it in English? When I when I when I got into the office in the big office, you saw in the city in the town. When I got into the office, I saw him and I saw Alexander. And as I stepped my way, I know the person <coughs> we're really talking to because I'm also coming to him. But when I saw him, I was like, I thought I'm the only one that's running an office. Mm. This man is also in the office. Near Sabella office, he was like an office. And I'm sitting, but I left him and he finished what he's thinking by me making my coffee and thinking, is this really God? Is this you? I'm thinking that in my brains while I make my coffee in this big office, seeing this guy that I rebuke in prison. And while I was making my coffee and my thingy, and I just said, I didn't talk much with him when he left me. <coughs> We both say this, I mean, sir. He said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And me and this guy go into a conversation, but me going back home and said, God, that is really you. Just because of this guy. Daarom see ik vir julle oons, ek wil nie alle ding wat u weet, ons lang, want dat bied die drug dealing guns kry, ek het ek, ek wil nie weet to you. Ek, ek was, ek was a connection person. Anything you ask, I will give it to you now in 60 seconds. So I don't have to worry about drugs. I get a corona, as I can, so this story that I've told you, I get a general, as we're in the Oost, and the area as we're here, as we're here, you can ask him, I was Sunday, it was in his church. I let the cake and the sturvy area, I like sturvy colors. You see that sturvy colors, that, that look like they almost did Hollywood colors. I asked him, that church, I told that people, I came into this, this area, I was sweated with drugs, I got to go with drugs. And look at the, that area today, it's over drugs. It was me, I was 13 years old. I was making money, I was moving it. And I'm sitting with a heart full of love. And I said, God, if you can change me, then I believe you can change that. Mm -hmm. I was the one that created that. If you see me, I know you're going to see me in bed. But you first had to heal me and make me strong to come back in there. Because I know I started a lot of things. That's why we are here. And I'm here with you guys. I could have bailed out this week, but I took my precious time of my off week. I said, I'm going to sleep. But just of my off week, I came and I want to. Be with you guys. Want you to dance with me, bro? Say, as you ride up, when you say, as you ride to up, when you are not, your name is Malcolm, and your name is Bernard. Let's just my name is Gordon. So is the brain. I come my name and I throw my stories. My girl is like, I throw my butt. I come, I come, I butt. I say the Lord, I rebuke this name. As I go in my community, as my mentor, my I say, the Lord bless you with so much. But now you gotta pray on your name because people still fear your name, and I pray every day on my name. I say, God, you just my name. Mm. That's what I want to say to you guys. God bless you. We're we going to have uh, our brother Russell on a later stage. Uh, for now, let's just honor the fact that we, the food is here. And then you can sit back on the tables. The person that created the mess, cleans the mess. Thank you. So,